डॉक्टर तिवारी वेलकम टू दी विश्व रंग 2020 डॉक्टर तिवारी वाज द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ द वेस्ट इंडीज फ्रॉम 2001 टू 2008 एंड कंटिन्यूड एज प्रो वाइस चांसलर फॉर प्लानिंग एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी सिस्टम अंटिल ही बिकेम मिनिस्टर ऑफ प्लानिंग एंड सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट इन टू He is a learner, teacher, researcher, writer, development enthusiast, and politician. He served in the parliament for fifteen years as both MP and senator, and was a twice a cabinet minister. He has written four books on diverse topics and scores of articles on education, culture. the arts business and sustainable development dr tiwari ji welcome to the vishwarang 2020 we are very happy that thank you, you join us yes thank you very much asha for inviting me and i'm very very um pleased indeed to be part of this discussion with you Dr. Tiwari ji, you have written many books. Which one is your favorite? Well, each one is my favorite for different reasons. For instance, I love the book that I wrote on Nepal because it was very different to anything anyone had written before about him, and it came. many years later out of the phd thesis that i did in 1983 so i loved that book because one it was about nepal two it was based on early very original work that i did and three because it gave a different more sensitive and respectful understanding of right. nepal and his work I like the book that I did on higher education together with two other colleagues. It was a, be, a book on higher education leadership and the reason that I like that is because I had been involved in education for many years. Right. And I had written about the education system about transforming about relevance about curriculum redesign etc but i've never i had never written about the issue of the leadership that it takes right. to make the education system responsive and i had two good uh colleagues one dennis gill who is a jamaican Right. and tom white who is an american and we collaborated on that so we brought different perspectives to bear i see and i was very happy when that book was written and that book has been widely translated and read all over the world great i enjoyed the book on caribbean uh economic development because it was in, it it made two critical points about Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean economy one it addressed the issue of uh, an oil economy or an economy that is dependent on one product and what that does to the rest of the economy if you so focus on one single export generating product i think that was very important and the second point that we made that was very vital and my colleague there was dr roger hussein who has been my colleague for many years he's at the university of the west indies now he's an economist um the the other point that we made is that when you have a high earning product such as energy right the reality is that you create a dual economy with dual levels of wages 
And that makes it very difficult to either cause diversification to happen, to cause investment to happen in the non high earning sectors. Right. And thirdly, it makes it very difficult for entrepreneurship to develop, to diversify the non high earning sectors of your economy. And then we made other points, but those were very, very critical and I think very insightful points about the nature of Caribbean economies and especially Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And the fourth book, and I would have to say perhaps I love that book the most now, is the book on sustainable development, thinking it through, making it happen. Right. Because I think the importance of that book was that the articles in the book trace my thoughts from 1997 to 2015. And it traced my thoughts as an academic, as an intellectual, thinking about the society and development. But it also traced my thoughts and the implementation of those ideas that came from those thoughts as a minister responsible for planning for the country. Very nice. And because of that and the consistency and the evolution of thought, I thought it was an important contribution to the development of my own ideas, but also an important contribution to the development of ideas in Trinidad and Tobago as a society and to government and government policy in Trinidad and Tobago. So I would say I was happy with all the books, but perhaps you okay. got me to say that I was happiest about the last book that I wrote. Okay, great. That's great. <laughs> That's great. How had Indian culture in Trinidad evolved over the 175 years since the first Indian migrated here? Well, first of all, I would like to say that India and Indian civilization did Trinidad and Tobago a big favor by sending some of its people to places like Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana and um, Suriname and the other islands of the Caribbean from Jamaica all the way down because we have Indians all over. I think they did the Caribbean as a whole a great favor by son sending some of their sons and daughters to the Caribbean even though they sent them as laborers and workers in a very harsh system of indentureship. Because I think what India did by doing that was that it put the Indian presence in the new world, first of all. Right. Secondly, it gave Indians who migrated here in whatever form, an opportunity in the new world to realize themselves in a different environment, but also to contribute to building of the new world in whatever society they came. And I think that the third thing that they did, that, that India did by sending my ancestors here was also to expand Indian civilization into the new world right. to go together with the cultural strengths that Indian immigrants brought with them to Trinidad and Tobago. Right. Uh, not only did they bring a language which has been largely lost now and has been revived, the Hindi language, but they brought with them the sacred texts, they brought with them Sanskrit, they brought with them the uh, literature, 
of the Indian civilization. They brought the knowledge of Hinduism, the knowledge of Islam. They brought with them as well an understanding of the Indian colonial experience right. and the nature of village life. And out of those things, Indians in Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the Caribbean oh, were oh. able to rebuild a life built based on memory right. and based on the need to retain some things. But because they were in a different environment, right. they created new things and they did some things differently. And when they could not remember correctly or could not get it in the authentic way, right. they did creative things that altered the character of the culture and the way it was presented. So right. I think in all, the culture has evolved from a culture of trying to retain the culture to a process of experimentation and creativity and a process also of designing and strengthening and invigorating a culture of Indian civilization in the new world. Right. At the same time, it has had to interact with other cultures here, European culture, African culture, right. um, the, cult, the Creole culture that it found here. And it has been able to interconnect with those and create new forms in terms of music, in terms of uh, designing ways of engaging and being and seeing and doing so that the, uh, the culture has, some of it, some of the culture has been retained, but a lot of it has evolved, it has diversified, it has created new things, and it has been the basis of influence even of the cultures around it, whether it is in food, whether it is in music, right. whether it is in celebrations, all of those things have made a difference here. Right. In what ways can contemporary advances being made in India be of value to Trinidad and Tobago? Hello. Sorry, I missed that. In what ways can contemporary advances being made in India be of value to Trinidad and Tobago? Yes, that, that is a very important question, Asha. Uh, because as I said before, India has contributed a lot to the Caribbean in terms of culture and in terms of civilization and in terms of a way of seeing the world. But India is a very modern nation now in, right. in many ways. And yeah. they are also a very scientifically and technologically advanced nation. When I look, for instance, of the contributions of Indians to the United States, what I see is that the wealthiest minority group are uh, Indians in the United States. For sure, yes. And the Indian population occupies some of the most influential roles yeah. in academia and industry in the United States. This is the heart of the strongest economic power and military power in the Western Hemisphere. So given that power that India has and its capacity to export right. what you might call knowledge capability, I think India can be very valuable to the Caribbean in terms of collaboration in knowledge, education, technology, scientific research, 
and basically intellectual advancement with practical applications to the process of development. Right. And I would like to see that happen as fast as possible in as intense a way as possible. Very nice, thank you. How, uh, Dr. Tiwari, nowadays we, everywhere is Corona, we are talking about. How do you think the Corona has affected the education system in Trinidad? Well, it has affected it very everywhere very badly because right. first of all, uh, schools have been closed. Right. Um, and Secondly, um, parents and children have been home together. Um, and thirdly, I think the children have been deprived of the educational experience with children of their own age and peers of their own age and the face-to-face -face opportunity in education. But I think on another level, a significant transformation has been taking place right. in terms of the technology of education, in terms of the delivery of education, yeah. in terms, because of social distancing, the ability to use uh, what, let's say, what we are using now right. in, terms, yeah. in terms of Zoom and other technologies. And I think that that has been enriching the technological culture of this society. Yeah. I think it has been easier for students who yeah. adapt more readily to this culture than it has been for their teachers who are older right. and have perhaps a little more difficulty in adaptation. But I think in time, this is going to become, in my view, the dominant mode of education right. and perhaps supported by some face-to-face -face encounters in education. And I think what we can say about COVID is that COVID has forced us right. to transform education and the culture of education, the modes of education, the delivery systems of education, and that it is not likely to go back to the old ways anymore. It has also made international. It has also made international education easier. Easier, for sure. Yes. Because you can do a course in in India from Trinidad and Tobago, yes. and Indians in India can do a course from someone in Trinidad and Tobago if they have the interest. Right. So anywhere in the world that you are, you can be a source of education to anybody else in the world from mm -hmm. anywhere, and that holds true for others in other parts of the world. I agree. Dr. Tiwari, what is your opinion about the Hindi situ situation in Trinidad? Well, I think it has been changing. I think that my generation lost Hindi. My father was a fluent Hindi speaker. I see. And my mother did a lot of her conversation. She used to run a shop okay. and she did a lot of the conversation with her customers right. partially in Hindi. Okay. Because some of them would come, they would talk with her, they would enjoy discuss okay. talking in Hindi and then they would engage as customers in what they wanted. Right. But our generation perhaps did not think it important enough I suppose. And I don't think our parents forced us. And we lost it. Now, I recognize a few Hindi words. I, I remember a few Hindi phrases. And if somebody is talking Hindi slowly, I can pick up the gist right. of what they're saying if they're talking about something I know. Right. But I am not able to speak it. My wife speaks a little bit. She knows a little bit because she did Hindi lessons. Um, so we lost it. But what is happening now is that the children of my grandchildren age are learning Hindi in the, um, 
in the Mahasabha schools. That's great. And they are making Hindi an optional subject in the secondary school system. Right. So in those kinds of ways, I think it is possible for Hindi to be revived. The Indian High Commission also has actively in Trinidad and Tobago right. a very engaged relationship with the Indian community here of Trinidad and Tobago in some of the temples, in some of the institutions, etc., where they also promote Hindi. And they have also, Hindi Nidhi yeah. has also emerged to promote Hindi as a language. So I think the chances are that access to Hindi, access to um, Hindi language in education and the promotion of Hindi is likely to continue more as a second language and as a cultural language than uh, perhaps as a first language or as a language you want to engage in on a regular basis. Regular basis. I understand. Any interesting incidents, Dr. Tiwari, would you like to share about your career in education? Anything very um, interesting to you? Well, what I, what I would say is that whenever I've been in, I've taught at the secondary school level, I've taught at the undergraduate level, I've taught at the graduate level, including PhD level and PhD supervision, but I've also been an educational administrator right. for a business school and for a university. That's right. And I think there are two things that stay with me. One is that if you are a teacher, the most important thing for you to help to do is to facilitate the enthusiasm of the student right. for learning new things, for being curious, and for wanting to explore through reading and research ideas that they are interested in. Right. To me, that is the essence of a good teacher, not to impart to the student or try to get things in his or her head but to cultivate the joy and the desire for curiosity and learning and to stimulate the hunger to know more and to be willing to go the extra mile right. to find out and discover what you want to know. I think that's an important thing. And I think the second thing that has stayed with me in my experience is that, I mean, the whole point of education is human development. That's right. Family development, community development, societal and development, and economic and sustainable development. Right. And if you do not align your education strategy or your education systems or your education thrust with those values, developing the human being, making sure you strengthen the families, making sure that communities benefit, making sure that society improves and becomes better and has higher aspirations, and ensuring that people have the economic means to make themselves better off and enjoy a better quality of life. 
I think then the whole purpose of education is lost. So for me, education, the two essential elements of education are stimulating curiosity and the desire to learn for its own sake, right. for the human individual. And secondly, making sure that education connects with the different aspects of development from human to industrial and civilizational. And if we can get those two things connected, I think we can have great societies in the world and we can improve human civilization and we can also deal with all the big problems that we are dealing, that we are faced with now. COVID, climate change, uh, sustainable development issues, the inequities that are glaring in the world, the vulnerabilities that we've come to appreciate now, especially exacerbated by COVID. I think that we can deal with all of those things if we understand those two dimensions of edu education. One, the connection with human curiosity and the need for self-discovery and self-learning and the connectivity with different elements of development from human to civilization. Thank you very much, Dr. Tiwari, for your time. We really appreciate. On behalf of thank you. On behalf of Vishwarang 2020, I thank you very much for your. Thank you very time. much, and I hope the people who hear this will appreciate my point of view. And it has been a great. Uh, service to me that you would give me such an audience in India. Thank you very much. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.